Well, hey, everybody, it is John C. Morley, serial entrepreneur, and welcome to another episode of the J. Moore Tech Talk Show. It's always great to be here with you. We have a wonderful show, and welcome, Marcus. It's always great to see your smiling face again. How are you doing tonight? I feel welcome, John, and uh, it's good to be back uh, with you another Friday. Well, it's always great to have you for another Friday. We're actually getting uh, ready, by the way. August is going to be our birthday, and uh, uh, we have a special surprise uh, coming up for that. So you're definitely going to want to tune in uh, on our birthday and uh, see what we have planned, but you're going to have to tune in for that. So uh, let's get into the show tonight. So we got some interesting things, and and you know, I know we always talk about COVID and stuff like that, but unfortunately... Um, it's a necessity. I have to tell you one quick story. I was uh, visiting somebody and uh, they had gotten rushed to the emergency room. And when I was going back to my car, there was this guy outside. And so people are always asking, can you help them? And then later, right away, we learned he had COVID and you never saw so many people run from him like at a million oh, wow. miles an hour. So we told the emergency room that there was a person standing outside with COVID and they said, well, he's just going to have to stay there because we don't have availability to help him right now. Mm. <laughs> wow. That just, I don't know, Marcus, that just really doesn't sit well with me. I'm sorry. No, it doesn't. You know, what is the world coming to? You know, I, I know, um, you know, this is, we're getting very limited with like the number of, of patients we can help but you know we still have to provide care yeah they they just they're just i don't know with these hospitals i think it's all just about money marcus unfortunately and uh you know when they bring people in you ever notice they move people in the middle of the night that's so they can get the best they can get the person in the bed the shortest amount of time and they want to get people out usually by 11 or 3 so they can get the room ready for somebody else and have another guest yeah, yeah. <laughs> whether you whether you're well or not, well, it's time to get you out. Yeah, that's usually the best time to you know go to the emergency like uh, in the middle of the night because you know you're gonna get pushed out fast. <laughs> and the other thing too is that you know they don't actually put you into a room until the wee hours of the morning. And I figured out what they do. They could just send you home for the emergency room, but they don't because they want to make more money by getting you a hotel stay. Yeah. It's overnight. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you get booked. Into I the get that night. sometimes yeah. people need to be monitored. But not everything needs to be monitored. No, no, no. I, I remember going in for something very minor, and you know, and uh, found myself in there for hours. You know, oh, you know, we just got we got to make sure the the medication is is is, is, is flowing through your, your your bloodstream, right? You're like, what? Yeah, <laughs> they got to make sure that the dollars are flowing through, <laughs> uh, you know, their bank account. That's what they got to make sure. <laughs> right. yeah. So. Um, Facebook. Uh, I don't know if you guys know, but I, I wear Ray-Ban glasses. I love my Ray-Ban glasses. And, and a couple of things to talk about with sunglasses, because it's really important. And we try to give you, you know, information we think that will be useful to you. So uh, one thing you guys don't know is that my dad actually had uh, cancer many years ago in his eyes. And he went through a very, um, let's say, um, special treatment that was in a beta process. And um, ever since that point, which it has to be over over 10 years or maybe more than that, 15 years, I've always wore sunglasses when I was in the sun or when I was on a boat or when I was somewhere skiing. I always wore glasses. But now, Marcus, I wear glasses every time I'm outside. Even if it's raining, I wear glasses. People make fun of me like, why do you wear glasses? I said, because so these are UV polarized, which means that they're blocking the UV ray and they're polarized so you get the sharper picture. But there's always that UV ray. Even if there's one, you still can have damage done to your eyes. Right. And I got to tell you, even when I'm driving, I wear them. I don't need them. But, you know, it makes things sharper. But also what it does is it puts less eye strain so that, you know, if you're outside and you're looking and there's the sun, you don't want to look at the sun, obviously. But when you're outside and let's say you don't have glasses on, your eyes can become tired much more quickly. That's very true. It's very true. So I recommend, uh, whether it's Ray-Ban or what have you, I know there's other manufacturers too. There's another manufacturer I think out there that if you buy their glasses, they charge you so much money that um, if you buy them, they have a lifetime replacement because they charge so much for their glasses. And, um, you know, I've always been very happy with Ray-Ban. But the reason I bring Ray-Ban up is uh, Facebook is announcing the Facebook Ray-Ban Smart Glasses. 
this is going to be interesting. But the first thing I want to tell you is that they're claiming, this is what they claim now. Again, this is speculation. Aria is this project that does 3D and gathers all kinds of information mm -hmm. about location and people. They claim, this is what they're saying now, <laughs> that it is not going to be part of the Aria project. That's what they're saying. Yeah. I don't know if I believe them or not, Marcus. Especially when, you know, accidentally, you know, uh, user data was shared, you know, to uh, thousands, <laughs> not hundreds, thousands of developers. And, and you know, it, it's just crazy, you know, um, that data can get in the hands of, you know, people that you don't even know. Absolutely. And, you know, Facebook said, and I quote, Ray-Ban glasses are completely separate from Project Aria. They will not share data. Yeah, he, I mean, even if it's <laughs> separate, you know, um, what, what I find surprising is that they, they're holding back on sharing, you know, the policy, the data policies before uh, the, you know, they're going to wait to the, the big reveal of the, the product itself before they even reveal the, the, the info on the data. I think what they're really going to do is this is going to be for people that want to use their computers on the go, or, you know, you've seen the movie, you know, where they draw their fingers and stuff like yeah. that. And you're going to be able to, they're not saying you can actually touch the things in, in here, but you can literally see them in your glasses. So if you can see them in your glasses, that doesn't mean you're going to be able to point in space to different things yet, but it is going to allow you to scroll and do different things and maybe use your iPhone to basically use your glasses as a screen. So you could watch email on one screen or browse the web in the other screen. So it could be pretty useful. Yeah, it's gonna be pretty cool. Um, I, I, I'm, I'm thinking about just like, you know, the Tony Stark Iron Man concept. Yep, yep, you yep, know? yep. So, you know, it's, yeah, it's gonna be pretty cool. So um, I, they got me interested, but I think I'll wait until I find out what they're going to be doing with people's data first. Well, that's a that's a very big concern of mine, you know, and and uh, with Facebook saying, uh, you know, its first pair of consumer augmented reality glasses were coming out next year, which they predicted September 16th, mind you, of 2020. And they claim that they're making it VR for virtual reality. Now, I got to tell you something, Marcus. You can't really make virtual reality or augmented reality, which is when you take uh, the synthesized reality and the real reality. You can't make that work well if you don't grab data. Exactly. Right? And if you want to interpolate things or cross things, how are you going to do that? Um, I don't know. It, it, it's I don't believe anything Facebook says. No, nah, and rightfully so. I told you the story They, they, uh, you know, they come and they give you free assistance to help you look at your ad, but they have the, this company, I'm not going to mention the name. It's a third party company. And all they do is try to rip you off more by telling you, Oh, your budget's not high enough. We got to set a higher budget. Well, do you think this is the right thing? Yeah. You just got to raise your budget. Well, wasn't that going to make me go through money fast? Yeah, but you need to do that. Well, but is it going to work? Oh yeah. yeah it's going to work. Then you do this. Like, okay, we have to raise the budget again. Well, why? It didn't go anywhere. Well, you had to put more money into it. But we just spent more money and it didn't do a thing more. Well, that's because you had to put more meat and put enough money in. I'm sorry. I just, I, these people are clowns. Yeah. I'm just waiting for the day when government is going to start treating them like utilities instead of like these, you know, uh, gods, these little online gods <laughs> like that can bully everybody. <laughs> it's, it's not right. And, um, I don't know what's going to happen, but I know what it's going to take. It's going to take people actually complaining to Consumer Affairs, to Better Business Bureau, to your state, congressmen. That's what it's going to take. So yeah. I have to just wait and see what's going to happen. But Mark claims that's the future and people have been waiting for it for a while. And uh, they're saying that the new smart glasses are going to rely on um on an external display but start to show you what it's like to be more present in the moment so it looks like they're going to use the display on your phone to let's say be an act an active but they're going to show you some things on the screen almost like a second screen is the way i envision it 
Yeah, and that makes total sense. But, you know, with, who knows what other features they might have. They might have voice recognition. Who knows what they're going to have? We just don't know. Yeah. I'm, I'm not rushing to get them. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you can put me at the back of the line, that's for sure. You could take me off the line. I don't even need to wait on it. <laughs> uh, speaking about Facebook, Facebook joins Google uh, in the crusade of the Vax mandate. With like Delta, <laughs> with the with the Delta variant on the rise, you, you know, we 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 was aware that this was going to happen. You know, so yes, it, it shouldn't connect not come as a surprise um well they uh, claim the reason they're doing is they want to give 135,000 workers and i quote greater peace of mind as offices open that's a bunch of bs yeah and google rolled the clock back on its return to office date guess when they did this to october mid-october those were the ones we were just talking about last week and i said to you they're probably going to change that they said it was not going to change they changed it. Yeah, they did. Uh, I won't be surprised if they push this all the way into next year, you know. So, and, you know, uh, if if the spice continue to happen. Both of these big tech players are trying to make uh, accommodations for people who are unable to be vaccinated now. Um but uh, I don't know. So that's going to happen because they want everyone vaccinated, including people that have medical conditions. But you know what, Marcus? There's a big uh, controversy on this. You know, does the vaccine cause problems in people's body? We don't know. No, we don't know. And whenever somebody has a problem, like, oh, it must have been the vaccine. We don't know that. So it's hard to prove or disprove that point. And uh, I want to quote another person, uh, Mr. Danny Meyer, uh, who owns Union Square Hospitality Group. And um, and he also founded Shake Shack. I'm not sure if you knew that. Mm -hmm. And uh, he is now requiring patrons who wish to sit inside his restaurants to provide proof of COVID-19 vaccine. And this applies to workers as well. Twitter's jumped on the ball, too, in light of these conditions. It's closing its offices in San Francisco and New York after reopening just two weeks ago. I, I'm just wondering, you, do, you, do you think there's going to be more people that follow suit with this, like more businesses? I do, because here's another one. Lyft postponed its office a return date by six months. They're now asking employees not to return to the office until February 2nd. Wow. There's going to be a lot of limited service uh, around the board for, for a lot of things. Already we're seeing people make excuses. And Apple has told employees that they won't be expected to return to the office until October 1st at the earliest. Yeah. They were saying that they were going to allow employees to come back in September in not too long ago and now they're saying october 1st i don't think anybody really knows what's going on marcus i really don't no not not they don't and apple's responding because of the covid variant you know the delta variant so right. they're all getting kind of scared and, and my message to people is i get that people are scared i get it so if you're going to go to certain locations i mean i ask people marcus have you been vaccinated and I proudly show my digital Vax card on my phone. But, you know, if you're going somewhere, I try to eat outside. If I'm going somewhere inside, I still don't want to be around a million people. Mm -hmm. I don't wear a mask all the time. Like the only time I went to a mask, I had a client. I went to a doctor's office who's a client of mine, and I wore the mask in the doctor's office. That's it. And in the hospital the other day when I went to visit someone. So I think we can't get crazy again like we did last year because, you know, that was nuts. Yeah, and you know, and what's what's really you know uh, mind -bob boggling to me is that like, what we did a great job with social distancing and and, and wearing masks. We did absolutely. And, we did. And you know, and why run away from that? You know, if um, we not sure if we got a uh, a solid handle on all of this. 
Exactly. And the minute they have one excuse not to return to work, I mean, as it is, Marcus, I know we've got orders coming in. We can't even deliver them because they're blaming COVID. And the reason they're blaming COVID is they say, now I find out the manufacturers ship the product, but they don't have people to work at the docks to take them off the boats. So those slow boats from China, well, they're arriving, but no one's there to greet them when they arrive. <laughs> Somebody said, oh, I'll go down the dock. Well, you can't. You're not a union worker. Oh, wow. So, and you're right about the about filing suit. Uh, you know, LinkedIn has just jumped on board. <laughs> LinkedIn's trust first return to office policy. It will allow its more than 16,000 global employees to decide how they will return to the office. If at all as they're planning to slowly reopen. The CEO, Ryan uh, Ruslansky, and I quote said, from once, from a, they're moving away from a one-size-fits-all policy. So this is hoping to let individuals and teams decide how they're going to turn to work and uh, their own hybrid work strategy. The company also said, and I quote, it expects more of its workforce to be remote going forward reversing the expectation of being in the office 50% of the time. Wow. You know, uh, we, we, we truly, you know, are still living in a new world. And it's just, you know, like you said, John, people are, you know, using more and more excuses uh, not to, you know, be full operational. Well, look, look at what's happening with unemployment. I think unemployment is supposed to announce uh, they're going to extend unemployment, I think. Yeah. And, you know, just just look at the effects of the, the first round of that. And, you know, you, you do another round of that. You know, you, you're never going to have uh, workers. I don't know. This just seems. um so it says the new Delta variant, and this just came out, by the way, on the 16th, is going to be the fuel that pushes the real reason to extend unemployment. Because they were not going to do it. They were toying with the concept. Mm -hmm. And it was supposed to end, as you know, on September 6th. But yeah. some of the brilliant economists think Congress should reconsider extending that due date due to the COVID Delta variant. So what happens when the Melissa virus comes or the or the or the Brady uh, COVID virus comes? What are we going to do? Run and hide? Yeah, they're saying that the strain is more contagious and it's caused a spike in many cases. So the renewed outbreak could lead to reduced economic activity when many people are just trying to get back to work. And many, they're claiming that if it goes the way it could, would make people wouldn't be able to access the unemployment system because they think it's going to grow even stronger. I mean, I think this is just terrible, Marcus. I think this is really bad planning. It is. And and just simply just, you know, um, catastrophizing the whole situation instead of like, you know, giving us some concrete, you know, planning and strategy. You know, it is not the way to do it. You know, it's it's just not. Uh, we've seen what happened before, and you know, and we haven't. It's just seemed like none of these experts have learned. They haven't, and I still think Marcus, they're treating this like a political saga. Yeah, this is not being handled in the manner in which it should be handled. I mean, that that's my own personal feeling. I think I think they could have had this thing worked out a long time ago. And and they really just didn't. Yeah, it, it, there's there's countries smaller than ours that like has worked this out, you know, to the, to the science and you know and are thriving, and, and back to back to normal. It, it's gonna be interesting. But speaking, we've been talking a lot about our friends Microsoft and LinkedIn, all these other companies. And you know something, Marcus, and I was reading about this not too long ago. Did you know that? These big giants like, you know, Microsoft, uh, let's say LinkedIn and Facebook. Listen to this. They're bringing in four times more revenue than the Zoom giant now. Wow. 
I think people, Marcus, I think they're tired of Zoom. Yeah. You know? And I know I choose to go on Zoom very sparingly. Yeah, I try to avoid it at all costs. Um, I, I, I even have gone back to other ways of like live streaming uh, you know here's an example here <laughs> so like, you know so I, I at all calls i try to avoid it you know so yeah I'm, I'm with you there john there are some benefits to it but i have to say that it cannot be the be all end all no it's not it, ju uh, it just it just really can't be because if it is then you know you got a problem and people are relying on these things and then the other problem marcus is that people that are on these and I'm not trying to knock any of these networking groups. I know they're trying to do something good, but you know, some of these groups, Marcus, they're free, right? Mm -hmm. But they're really a business. You know, they're free, but they're charging advertisers. Yeah. And it's a business. And really what it's coming down to is numbers. Mm -hmm. It's numbers. And they're just seeing how can we monetize it? But it's not really what's best for our economy. What's best for our economy is people that get in their chairs and get back to work. Yeah. Right? Right. I mean that that's really I think what it what it comes down to. So we're going to have to just wait and see what's going to happen there. I'm just hoping people will have a little bit smarter heads, but speaking again about Microsoft, uh, I know we've talked about this before. The Windows 11 first beta release, which I'm not too excited to get, to be honest with you. I never like anything when it first comes out. Um, there's going to be some things you're going to need to have if you decide to have it. You're not going to have to have a developer installed, by the way. You're going to be able to get it if you're part of the Insider program. So you don't have to have that special software to install it like you used to on the older versions. You're going to have to have the Trusted Platform Module 2.0, which is why it won't run on a Power Mac. They don't have TPM. Mm -mm. Not even 1.0, but you need 2.0 on, um, on, on a PC to run Windows 11. You're also going to need to have Secure Boot, or UEFI, which is Unified ex uh, Extensible Firmware Interface. And what the heck is all that? Well, so basically um, what happens is um, in the UEFI process, you know, they, they store all the data about initialization startup in an EFI file instead of storing it on the firmware. Mm. So that's interesting. But you know the thing I'm not crazy about? It's being stored on the hard drive. Yeah. Right? So why didn't they make that file? Why didn't they put it on the BIOS? I mean, I think the BIOS was much more stable. They put it on the hard drive. I'm not in love with that at all. That's definitely a drawback. Uh, you know, I, I don't know what they were thinking there. Well, I think they were trying to come up with a better system, which I have to hand to them. I think it was great. I like the way the UFI system works, and it definitely has a lot of pluses. Don't get me wrong. But I think it really wasn't engineered very well. I mean, when I heard it was stored on the hard drive and not a chip, I mean, come on. What are we going backwards? <laughs> yeah. That's so it, Windows 11, like. in case you're wondering, needs four gigs of RAM. But we all know that when they say that, that's the minimum. So don't expect to do anything like, you know, run around uh, the mulberry bush or anything. You'll probably get it to turn on, but you're probably still going to wait a little bit. And you need 64 gigs, did you hear me? 64 gigs of storage. That's must double from what Windows 10 needed. Yeah, you can forget about having having anything that you had previously stored on your computer. You can get it off. <laughs> You're gonna need to have um, a one gigahertz processor or to, um, or you can have multiprocessors. And so that is a, that's a requirement. So, I mean, I don't know anybody that doesn't have a one gigahertz processor. So hopefully that really leaves everybody, you know, out of the mix. Uh, you are going to also need to have, as I said, the UAFI, the secure boot capable machine. Uh, you're going to need to have a graphics card that's compatible with DirectX or later, 
with a WDDM 2.0, which is the Windows uh, the driver modules. You're going to need to have a, a high-definition screen. Now, this is not hard. 720p um, that is greater than 9 inches diagonally. Well, if you have something that's 9 inches, I think you're probably in the Stone Ages. <laughs> and it has to be 8 yeah. bits per color channel. I think we were above that a long time ago. Oh, and by the way, Demet, you're going to have to have internet an internet connection on it. Of course, you need an internet connection. Course, I mean, come on. Of course you do. Uh, but, you know, they're saying that they're getting rid of the Windows as a service, as we talked about. Mm -hmm. And they're saying that they're not going to roll out updates as they – it's going to be like a once-year update. I don't know. That's going to be very interesting. They're also claiming that Windows 11 is going to create greater connectivity to different program and software like Teams. And the other thing that I do not like, Windows 11 Home, not the professional version, but the Home will now do what Google does. They require a Microsoft account and an internet connection at setup. I don't like that, Marcus. Mm. That's like the, the Google Chromebooks. Yeah. You can't set the stupid thing up without creating a Google account. Yeah, that's, yeah, that's dumb. It's really dumb. Um, well, they're I, doing it because they want to track people. Yeah, it's, it's all about the data. It's all in the data. Now, the other thing it's, that's very interesting is that Windows 11 is free right now mm -hmm. when it comes out. But your CPU may not be officially supported yet. That's going to be very, very interesting, Marcus. But... The thing I think you probably would, would like to learn is that they're going to be uh, removing a lot from Windows 11, hmm. an awful lot. So Cortana will no longer uh, be in the mix. No more. Yeah, people don't use it like use Cortana like that anyways anymore. Live tiles, which we've seen with the active tiles, will no longer be in the start menu. They had researched the exploring and de-emphasizing uh, of the live tiles. Well, it's gone in Windows 11. There's no more tablet mode. And Windows 10, or what they call the S mode, is mm -hmm. going to be handy for tablets now. Because they didn't design 11 for tablets. What were they thinking? <laughs> right? The only thing that can be used for tablets is the Windows 11 Home. Okay. What? Skype is no longer going to be included in the clean install of the operating system. That's nice. A lot of people didn't like it anyway. No. Who, who, uh, not many people are using it anymore. Teams will now be integrated as part of Windows 11 operating system. Probably still going to have to pay for it. One note for Windows 10 also will no longer be included in the clean install. Oh, and you're going to love this. If you like to have kids that like to play with paint, 3D, 3D viewer, they're not going to be there anymore. Wow. <laughs> oh, man. That's, yeah, I, you know, that's that's crossing the line there because paint is, you know, is a really useful <sighs> app application. And all of these apps, well, just want to let you, they're not really gone. You'll still be able to download them from the Microsoft Store and install them on your computer, which they'll probably be free, but they won't be part of the native uh, install. Yeah. You're no longer going to be able to pin uh, the taskbar to any side of the screen anymore. It'll only be aligned to the bottom in Windows 11. And apps can no longer uh, be customized uh, on the taskbar anymore. I'm not really running to get Windows 11, I'll tell you that. You know, just hearing all of that and all of these 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 changes, it just it just really freaks you out. It's like, okay, you know, I, I know you want to go underneath the un, underneath the hood and and tune it up, but you know, we said tune it up, not you know, not completely slow it slow the acceleration down. <laughs> exactly. And, and speaking about tune up, so one thing that happens, you know, regardless of whether it's uh, uh, somebody installing this at home and uh, you know, maybe they forget the password and some of these these software programs. I'm not going to mention the name, but there's one company. They're green. You probably know who I mean. And they have like an antivirus uh, program and they've kind of come up and spyware. They've come up that scans for spyware. 
if you forget that password, or let's just say somebody gives you a computer and they leave that program on there and they lock it, you can't get it off. You have to hack it to get it off. Mm -hmm. Now, you might tell you that's pretty easy. Well, even if you want to go through that and you haven't totally gotten all the remnants off, well, guess what? When you go to try to install another virus program, it'll tell you that it can't operate in real scan mode because there's still remnants of such and such still on your computer. It's crazy. So uh, really, really, really nuts what they're, you know, what's going on. And a lot of times people do that because they want to make sure a client stays a client. And I tell clients, look, I say, you know, you want the password, we'll give you the password. We just ask you not to use it because we don't want you to mess something up and change something that you may not know about. You know, that that that's that's my big thing because, well, you know, I change this and suddenly I have no Internet or I change this and now there's no Internet. And, you know, and, and that's annoying. So I think that's a you know, that's a problem. But I do recognize that some customers are like, well, you know, I want the password. You know, my recommendation is to put the password in a trust. Yep. You know, that, that's my recommendation. But I can't tell you how many companies that I have dealt with that just, I don't know, they just don't do the right thing, Marcus. They, they completely never do. They uh, get so, uh, they get too big for their britches. You know, that's, that's, that's the old Southern saying there, you know, getting too big for their britches and, and try to jump on a horse. And embarrass themselves totally. Yeah, they do that. And then you wonder what's going on. And then the problem happens because, you know, they want to remove something. And suddenly you can't remove something because somebody left that in the system. And, you know, you didn't even know that they put it on there. And that's a real problem. It is. But this is becoming more and more of an issue that I see every single day. Thus, uh, you know, make sure you have access to your information and that you know what to do uh, because sometimes people lock you out of your data and I just don't think that's right. No, it's not right at all. If somebody wants to leave you for whatever reason um, and providing there's no balance due, because usually people want to leave because they owe you money, uh, but providing that they don't owe you a balance, I don't see any problem you know, with handing over the information, you know, to, to keep them prisoner of their own equipment. But a lot of companies do this. The cable companies do this, Marcus. Mm -hmm. um, and I was happy to report some good news. Uh, so Altice, who I talked about, who's the French company that uh, is uh, basically one of the big cable providers, they got rid of this UV modem, which I, could, I told you had the potential of catching on fire. When you tipped it over, it would shut its modem down by 85% of capacity. It had a software throttle to shut it down so it wouldn't catch on fire. Oh, wow. So they have stopped providing that modem now. And they have another modem. I don't know the name of it, but they put their name on and they call it the Altice modem. Who knows where that's made from? But you know it's probably... <laughs> proprietary crap you obviously know that <laughs> yeah it's, so, not, it's not made here that's for certain <laughs> no but this was made in in uh vietnamese the other one. Oh wow and i think they might have had some fires <laughs> <laughs> the real good modem was eris but i found out they won't uh do business with them anymore apparently they have a bill that they didn't pay so they are not allowed to do business with them anymore but another thing that's going to be interesting um, with uh, UEFI and whether you have Windows 10 or Windows 11, if you have UEFI uh, enabled, you're going to be able to support nine zettabytes as opposed to 2.2 terabytes with a standard BIOS. So that's another reason that if you have more storage, you need to use UEFI boot. You have to use that. So... A bit, just in case you guys want to know, it's basically a one. Okay, it's one one bit, just one. A byte is eight bits. A kilobyte is 1,024 bytes. A megabyte is 1,024 kilobytes. A gigabyte is 10, 1,024 megabytes. A terabyte is 1,024 gigabytes. A petabyte is 1,024 terabytes. 
An exabyte is 1,024 petabytes. A zettabyte is 1,024 exabytes. And we have one more. A yottabyte is 1,024 zettabytes. So we're a terabytes route. Now, most people can comprehend terabytes. Mm -hmm. Gigabytes, mostly gigabytes, but some people can comprehend terabytes. So we got petabytes, exabytes, and zettabytes. That's one, two. That's three levels higher. Okay. Yeah. Then terabytes. Wow. And something new is going to be coming out on the iPhone 13. We have a little bit of information on that. It's something called LTPO, low temperature polycrystalline oxide. Say that a million I can't, times. I'm not, I'm not going to try it, John. I, I'm going to just save myself the, the embarrassment from saying it, <laughs> you know, because I know, I know it's a tongue twister. <laughs> so it basically stands for low temperature uh, polycrystalline oxide. And I know that's a mouthful, as we said, but uh, it really equals better battery life on higher premium mobile devices. So it allows the display to refresh at higher rates for more fluid games, a smoother scrolling, and efficient and lower rates when we talk about things like uh, the times when a phone screen used to pixels aren't changing. Oh, that could be beneficial. Yeah, it can be beneficial. You know what they're going to do or what's going to happen. But it's you know, I have some concerns, Marcus, about the i uh, phone thirteen. Mm -hmm. I'm usually gung ho about changing my phone every year, but I'm not really excited this year. And the okay. reason is two things: one, they may be getting rid of the lightning port on the phone. That's what it sounds like uh, with this with this low temperature. Um, and I'm just going to say P.0. <laughs> oh, uh, yeah, the, A the LTPO. Um, yeah, I mean, it's going to be something that's going to be a sacrifice. You know it is. And the other problem I have, Marcus, it's a problem I have. So on my phone, if you see, I have this great little magnet. Okay. But what it does, I've had this on lots of phones. I have this clip on my belt. I take this little device. This is clipped on my belt, just like this. Mm -hmm. If this lock is engaged, I don't care what you do. You're not getting this thing off this, this clip. If I make this go down and then I try to turn the phone, it releases. One bad thing is you see where I have the mag, this uh, magnet. Well, this interferes with the safe battery charging smart battery uh, yeah. charging. It can't make contact with the device. If you try to put it any other place on the phone, it doesn't activate the charging. Hmm. But really star, because you know, if you go somewhere, right, and, and this device drops, that could be a problem. Yes. Um, you know, it, it's very, it's very well held. And these little uh, metal things, I think they sell for, like $29.95, just a metal if you need like a spare one. So if you have other device you have to hook on and you don't have to use them for phone, you can use them for other stuff. But the problem when you use these clips is half the time they fall off. This never falls off, Marcus. Yeah, it, never. It, it, that's, that thing's pretty indestructible. I, I really like like that, you know. It's uh the clip was like tw uh the clip is $19.99. And then the other piece on the bottom is $29.85, but they have a, a special where if you buy it together, I think it comes out to $49 or $59.99. Okay. And so very durable, very stable. I mean, that, that magnet on here, I mean, that's a solid, solid magnet. And you can see how many times I've taken it on and off. And it's still just as – but what I like is that if you bring it close to it and you have this thing in the locked engaged position that let's say it's locked, once you have it in that locked position, whether it's, whether it's locked or whether it's unlocked, the thing is if it's locked – you can't you can't twist it. So if I put it in the lock position and I put the phone close like that, I can't twist it, but it ain't coming out. It, it's 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 solid on there. That's a good clip. <laughs> <laughs> That's a real good clip. 
Uh, I got it because I would go rappelling all the time uh, down mountains and stuff like that, small ones. And the phone would always drop. But I remember getting my first iPhone and it wasn't even 24 hours and uh, the screen got damaged. All because they sold me a clip at the store, the mobile store, that wasn't very durable. I literally was taking a walk outside. It fell off the clip. This, there's no question to whether this clip is engaged or not. You have no, as long as this thing is in the upright position, you have more chance of the clip falling off your belt than, than it coming out of the actual holster. Wow. You know, so uh, it's um, it's an interesting thing. And uh, I think the problem, most people don't buy the right protection for their phones or for their devices. You know, they buy these cheap little things. Mm -hmm. And, you know, there was a company out. I'm not going to mention your name, but they had this waterproof case. You probably remember them. And, um, well, the thing about this waterproof case is that they want you to test the case once a year. They want you to put it through this waterproof test where you take the phone out, you put the this thing in, and you test the case with something else in water. I remember having one, and I remember after my second one that I wanted to test it, started to leak, so they sent me a new one. But the case isn't leak-proof forever. It has a lifetime of how long it's leak-proof for. Mm -hmm. And that's something they don't really tell you about. Because they're not. <laughs> they, 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 they see that um, not telling you is more beneficial than you being told. I agree. And this clip you could find online, but the same people that make that case that was waterproof make this clip. I don't like the case, but... Because the case I'm using is not even the same manufacturer. It's a different manufacturer. But I'm using the clip because the clip is remarkable. They mm -hmm. make camping gear for crying out loud. <laughs> so they, they they really, I mean, you could put some, you could put a lot of weight on there. I mean, some people put their GPS in their car and they do the same, the same locking mechanism. Right. Instead of clipping on your belt, it goes into your dashboard. So they make lots of different mounts. And I will tell you that when I switch my phone, I'm probably not going to get a new clip. I'm going to pay twenty ninety five, and I'm going to get another one of those because you can't get that thing off the phone. That isn't coming off the phone. It's actually on the case of the phone. So it's not on the phone. It's on the case. I've, I've seen those uh, and then also seen the little, you know, the, the sticky ones that, like, you know, that sticks to the back of the phones. Um, that, that has the metal, the metal, um, yeah, with well, the metal, the magnet, and um, those are very effective as well. Um, but you know, the one you have is you know, probably most top of the line ones, you know. So it is, and, and like I said, you go camping and you have something on there, and you just somebody try to pull. Like, the other thing, too, is if you think about sometimes if you go to like the city or different places and people try to pickpocket you, right? Mm -hmm. Well, the thing is, if somebody grabs a phone and it's loose. They could very easy bump in the crowd and just take it right off you, okay? This, they have to not only reach below the thing, get it. That's pretty hard to do. So the chances of being pickpocket of your phone is also up there because people try to rob phones when you're in, um, you know, like a big crowd. They just try to bump into you. Um, mm -hmm. I still remember when I was in Italy many years ago, and I, I was a lot younger. I was actually in my eighth grade uh, grammar school. And my, my mom's um, father took me, which is uh, my grandfather on my mom's side. And uh, they took me to Italy with my cousin. And we were going to a restaurant after we got off the plane. Well, before we did that, we were in the street. And this kid comes up to me, okay? And he looks all dirty. And, you know, you, you first feel sorry for him because you don't know what he wants. So one kid comes up to you, you know, like looking for money or something, and he shoves a newspaper, mm. okay, uh, basically right right by you so, so, so that 
the the the, the guy basically shoves shove, shoves the newspaper uh right here. So he's shoving a newspaper, let's say on my left, and I'm paying attention here. But well, while he's doing that, somebody's grabbing my wallet the other end because you're not paying attention to the other side. Yard of distraction. Wow. And no. within 10 minutes, that wallet, which I think at the time was a coach or Louis Vuitton, we went across the street to the pond. There's a store there. Saw the same kid. He was all cleaned up. And uh, he was behind, the, you know, in the sink. He was washing up. And somebody else, family member, was there in the store. Said, That's my wallet. Here we have it. Um, you want to purchase it? It's mine. Oh, somebody just brought it in here. He stole my wallet. Well, if you want it, you got to buy it. I got to buy my own wallet back? I look at the wallet. There is no money in there. Mm. But do you know what's still in there? All my credit cards. Credit cards. Yeah. <laughs> credit cards and my license. I said, it's my wallet. Well, you have to buy it if you want it. So I think the wallet cost me 20 bucks if you convert the lira to, because it was 20,000 lira, which is like $20. You know, man, these these criminals, they, they, they really, you know, are quite crafty. And we have to be, be aware uh, of when we're walking on the streets, uh, especially when we're tourists and, and in foreign countries. You know, it, it it can get quite quite dangerous. I I agree with you, Marcus. I think people yeah. need to understand that you never can be too careful. No, you can't. You know, but we are at the top of our hour again. I don't know where our time goes. And listen, ladies and gentlemen, if you have an idea for our Jay Moore Tech Talk Show, just visit jmoore.com. At the top right, you'll see reach out. Uh, there's a button there. You can click on it. And click on the contact us and let us know what idea you have for a show. If you'd like to be a guest on a show, of course, we welcome that. Remember that coming on our show means that it's going to be educational content. You're not coming on here to sell or push or try to, you know, uh, manipulate anybody because we don't allow that. Also, if you have an idea for a product that you would like me to unbox, you can also visit the site. And if you donate the product to us and ship it to us, we'll be happy to do a review. But one thing I want to share with you. If your product is actually a lemon, which I hope it isn't, please don't send it to me and expect me to turn your lemons into lemonade because I will expose it for the true truth that that product really is. Well, I guess we have to say goodbye, um, but we'll be back. Actually, can you believe, Marcus, we're going to be back. It's going to be next month. This is the yeah. last Friday of July. Where the heck did the month go? It flew right by, right over our heads. So yeah. we're going to be back for our first Friday of August. And then I believe not too far after that, we're going to have a quick little, our birthday is going to be coming up not too far after that. So we're definitely going to celebrate that. You're going to want to stay tuned for our special little mini show on our birthday. That'll be coming up. And, um, you know, we have lots of great stuff happening. And I hope you'll continue to tune in and watch many of the other channels we have, as you guys know, beside the tech show. And I have lots of shows on, on, on YouTube. You can always Google my name and you'll see tons of content out there. But if you miss any of our shows, just go to jmor.com. You'll be able to go find the show um, and also be able to read the entire show because within a week or two after the show airs, we transcribe the entire show. This way, you can actually go back and read everything that was said verbatim on the air. Well, we got to say goodbye to everyone. I hope you guys all have a great week, and we're going to see you next month. Bye, everyone. Bye-bye.